Hi, so you might remember in a previous video we made this thing. This is uh, a PC fan, these are some plastic discs, I glued a lot of toothed belt around it, meshed them all together and we crank that and it generates because these, this toothed belt on the plastic disc acts like a cog and we've got a reduction ratio going on. So I did a fair uh, job on that actually. Uh, and I was thinking about that one and what I came up with was this one which I thought was really cool. And you see that I've replaced the um, tooth belt by mysterious bits of blue plastic tape. That's because I love those moments when you pull back the cloth and go, aha. So what I've done is I've done exactly the same thing. And the way I made this actually is just the same way that I made the other one. And I'll give a link in the um, description to that video so you can see how this was made. The only difference is that tooth belt wasn't used. Uh, oh, and this. This is uh, an electromagnet from a toaster, and here it's actually functioning as a coil. So I've got this coil here just glued next to that wheel, and I've attached it up to uh, my multimeter here, and we're reading the volt reading at the moment. So if I give that a spin, we get a couple of volts out of that really easily. So I'm going to uh, connect a resistor in line. I haven't put a rectification circuit on this, so I am measuring AC and not DC. So I've got a 100 ohm resistor in line there, and we'll put that onto the amp reading. Give it a spin. And we can generate a few milliamps. Uh, I think you've got to 14 milliamps, no problem at all. So. What's so cool about that, you might say, because it's clear all that's happening is one rubbing against the other. But if you look carefully down here, you'll see, in fact, they're not rubbing. And I think that's so cool. They're actually distant from each other. And that's because underneath this blue tape is a whole load of these things. Tiny magnets. These tiny magnets are arranged north, south, north, south, north, south, all the way around this ring, this ring, and this ring. So what they are, in fact, are magnetic gears. So I thought that was super cool. Because we've made a, a magnetic gearing system uh, that can generate at this coil. Now, I found that when I did the um, reduction gear like that, so I have a large gear to a small gear, if I used the same magnets, actually it was appalling. It really didn't work. So what I did was up the size of the magnets. So these are half a centimetre in diameter. These are one centimetre diameter, they're the same thickness, they're three millimetres thick. So upping that diameter obviously increased the strength of the magnetic field because I also wanted it distant so that you could see that it wasn't actually rubbing because obviously no contact equals no friction and that's kind of cool. The only reason I used this thing is because it's what I have lying around. Now, I'm not going to go making big... Um, bits of kit and spending all the fortune on things without first modelling something. This is the way I like to think. I did the same in the battery, so I make a small battery while I work something out. Same thing here, make a small model that doesn't cost very much. I mean, it's made out of builder's board and a bit of electronics I found lying around. That probably cost about three, four pounds, something like that. And, uh, and lets me play with stuff, work out what it is that I'm going to do and what kind of arrangements we're going to need. Because that little thing about small magnet to big magnet for big cog to small cog, I'd never thought of that unless I'd actually done something like that. So just giving things a go in a model helps you work out an awful lot of things. So it's my tendency to model something first. Now this magnetic gear system I think is absolutely awesome. Now, there are downsides to it. Apparently, it's heavier, it's more expensive, and, and you can't get high torque out of it. It tends to slip. So if I hold that and give that a spin, that will spin, but that won't because the torque requirement's too high. But it spins really nicely when you've got it in a low torque requirement, and, of course, wind generators are ideal for that. In fact, when you read up a little bit about um, magnetic gears, it talks about putting them in wind generators. So you have to think, wouldn't that be a good arrangement to put in a wind generator? You see, we've got a too fast wind, so it's trying to turn too fast. This won't turn, protecting the whole system without having to put a braking system or anything in it. You would get automatic protection of your wind generator by the fact that under high torque, that will slip. Now, 
it um, has obvious advantages. That is, the massive reduction in friction. There's going to be no wear and tear, and so the maintenance is going to be absolutely minute on something like that. And the generation, actually, is not inconsequential. I mean, obviously, I've used this tiny, tiny coil, because all I want to know is, can it generate? It's obvious what the next things are. Put a bigger coil on it and see how much it can generate. Just right now, I want to see that it can do that job. And, and I found that out and some interesting information about that. So I thought I would share that with you as an extension to the previous one we did. Because to be honest, that was a piece of cake to make. I, drew, I cut these out in the circular saw like the other one and then drilled half centimetre holes all the way around and pop the magnets in and put the blue tape on just to hold everything in place. That's the only reason it's there. And that little gap there is perhaps a bit bigger than it needs to be, but it certainly is um, good for demonstrating that they are in fact not rubbing against each other. And so it's not like a pulley system, uh, it's actually a magnetic gear. Now, I thought that was interesting, I thought it was fascinating actually. So I thought I would share it with you. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.